is the author of a new book which launched just a few days ago. It's called Illuminating the Darkness and it critically addresses the issue of racial discrimination and colour prejudice in religious history, tackling common misconceptions. Please give a very big welcome on to Living the Life, author Habib Akande. Welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for um, having me. Now, first of all, let's talk. Let's go straight into talking about your book. Mm -hmm. um, I've read parts of it. It is packed of, with facts. How did you write this book? It's got so much history in there. Um, a lot of research, a lot of self-study. Um, I started writing the book, I think, about 2006, mm -hmm. um, just when I was in Egypt. And when I came back, uh, I continued my studies, my self-study. It was really... I initially wanted to just kind of look into the um, African history and do a lot of research in African history and what Islam says about racism and race relations. And then I just started, the more I started researching and to find out so many things, I started compiling a lot of evidence. And I just, I just went yeah, The history there. is so vast, there's yes. so much. How did you choose what to include in the book and what to leave out? It was very difficult, very difficult. The, actual, the original book is actually three times the size of the actual book that we've got now. Um, but when I spoke to my younger mm. sister and I asked her to review it, she said that you need to cut it because it's going to be too much for people to read. So I wanted to kind of make it concise. Well, we've got a copy of the book here, Illuminating yeah. the Darkness. So how did you come up with this title? It's a really, really intriguing title. <laughs> well, uh, the title, um, I can't really take full credit for the title because okay. there was a scholar um, called Ibn al Jose. He actually wrote a, a book called Illuminating Darkness based on this particular topic. So I sure. wanted to pay homage to him. And also, I mean, the title as well is quite catchy. And it's a kind of a title to reflect what I'm trying to do, which is trying to illuminate the darkness, meaning enlighten people regarding this particular topic. Okay. Now, um, how did you get into writing this book in the first place? Because what's your, what's your background like? Have you always been interested in, in, in this kind of subject matter? Or is it something you kind of fell into? It's something I fell into. I'm, to be honest, I'll, it sounds quite strange since I wrote a book, but I, I never really used to like <laughs> reading um, or studying, to be honest. Wow. It's only something that happened the last probably like five, six years um, where I was passionate about reading and learning more about the religion of Islam. Um, I was fortunate to travel to Egypt for um, three years to study. Wow. Whilst I was there, um, there's a lot of things I learned about the religion, and this was one of the issues that I wanted to kind of talk about because I, I really enjoyed um, learning about African history and Islamic mm -hmm. history, and I thought that I, want, I wanted to share that with people, so I went about compiling this book. Now, reading the book, it seemed like there was an emphasis in um, bringing out the importance of black people yes. in Islam. Why did you feel that you had to do this? Um, is there an issue, do you think there is an issue in the Muslim society? Yes, I, I, I think um, the issue of racial discrimination and colour prejudice, particularly towards black people, it was an issue which a lot of Muslims did not address. Um, and m myself as a black Muslim, I've been subjected to certain um, racial discrimination and colour prejudice, both within um, England and abroad. And it's something that I was waiting for scholars and writers to kind of talk about this and unfortunately it's not really it's not really spoken about as much as I would like to, it to be. So I wanted to kind of contribute and hopefully be part of the movement to kind mm. of educate people in regards to this topic. So you're highlighting a topic that's clearly something that's quite a sensitive matter. Yes. What has the reaction been like from the public? The, to be honest, the reaction has been quite very positive. Um, like on our Facebook page, I've got a Facebook fan page, we've got over 3,000 um, wow. likes. Um, we've had a, a book launch, as you just mentioned, and the, the turnout was wonderful. I'm getting a lot of messages of support from Muslims and non-Muslims, black people and non-black people, Africans and non-Africans, that are thanking me for you know writing a book and, and hope, hopefully asking if many more um, writers and scholars can contribute and talk about African history and um, Islam's uh, stance towards racism. Has, do you think that over time, um, throughout history, the perception of African Muslims has changed. Did you find that that while you were writing the book, that yes. perhaps there's been some improvement over time? It depends where you, what part of the country you're looking at, or what, what region of the world. I mean, in certain regions it has improved, um, and unfortunately, certain regions it, it, ha it hasn't. So again, it depends on where you're looking at. But I would say, to be fair, in, in this country, the perceptions of African Muslims is is quite positive. Mm. Now, um, you, you you know, in the book you talk about North Africans as yes. well. Is that a particular subject that you're focusing on in the book? Yeah, I mean, I when I was in Egypt, I was fortunate enough to stay with a couple of Moroccans, okay. and when I when I told them my ideas of writing a book about African history, they said, make sure you talk about um, Morocco and North, mm. North Africa represent for us because a lot of people when we talk about Africa, they think of just like Black Africa, um, mm. Sub-Saharan Africa. So I wanted to clearly let people know that by me saying North African, I'm including. Berbers and Coptics have got a great history as well within Islam. For anyone who hasn't read the book, um, tell the viewers what they can expect from it. 
Um, a lot of research. Um, I think a lot of things that you wouldn't, that you you'd probably be surprised of about Islam. Um, I've also got. A, There's a chapter yeah. on black prophets, isn't there? Yes. It? Yes. Tell us like, more about that. Um, in in the religion of Islam, we know that there was over. There's a tradition that says there was over 124,000 prophets, and not many people know that some of the prophets were black. Um, even Luqman alayhi salam. There's some a difference of opinion, but some scholars say that he was black. Also, the Qarrain as well. There's uh, there's a um, tradition that says he was black as well. So, and there's also like rulers, kings and queens who are black as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to highlight this to, also to educate people about um, the status of black people yeah. in Islam. So where can people purchase the book if they're interested? Yes, you can purchase it from Amazon. Okay. Um, also, rabah.com, that's R-A-B-A-A-H.com, and it's also available on Kindle as well at the moment. So. Okay, nice. so lots of different avenues there for people yes, to explore. Sadi, should we take a look at how Kanita's doing over there in the green room? Now, it looks absolutely incredible. I think um, I'm, I'm really, really hungry now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so am I. It does look really good. And um, I'm just looking forward. Kanita, would you be able to hold up one of those for us so we can uh, have, a, have a look at it? That's absolutely amazing. Habib, would you, um, are you into apple pastries? Eh? I am. I'm actually peckish just looking at it. Right now. <laughs> are you one. much of a, a cook yourself? I can cook. Yeah? I can cook really well, to be, not to brag about myself. All right, really so well. next time we'll, we'll have you uh, yes, making definitely. something else I'll over there. I'll cook you jello for us. <laughs> now, if people want to get in touch with you and they want to find out more, how can they go about doing uh, that? Facebook, facebook.com yeah. forward slash illuminating the darkness. You can find me um, and, you know, like the page and by the book. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Jazakallah Khair for joining us. Oh, yeah. Well, unfortunately, we've reached the end of today's show. A big thanks to all of our guests, um, Adam Williamson and Richard Henry. Absolutely. Also, thank you to Kanita and Habib Akande. Join us the same time tomorrow evening. Until then, from all of us here at Living the Life, have a very pleasant evening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Together we can build hope. Orphans in need, sponsors living the life.